Hello everyone and welcome back to our JRPG series. In this episode we're going to work on more items for our characters to use such as grenades and ethers. So let's get started. So I'm going to first of all set up some other items that we can use here. So I'm going to go to the items folder and make another child of the item base. And we'll call this one item and we'll call this one an ether. And the other's purpose is to restore MP. So we're going to go to the park system here and we'll give it the same one we've given the heal one. Not too fast right now. And we go to its class defaults, open the item details. And in here, we we'll call it an ether. The item description here is restore a small amount of MP to the uh, t um, ally. To an ally. Okay. And the type for this would be restorative, cell value, 50, buy value, 120, doesn't really matter. Uh, compile and save that. On the event graph here, go to begin play. That's when you want it to do this. We're going to get the unit that this thing is aiming for, so we're going to get the recipient. And from there, we're going to do spend MP. Plug that in. And on spend MP, we're just going to put in negative, I don't know, uh, let's do negative uh, 25. Okay. Because it's negative, it's going to do the opposite of what we normally put in there, which is going to be making it go up instead. So hit compile and save that. And that is the item ether. And remember, we can add that to our inventory, to our character, just fine by going into the player controller, going to item inventory, adding here, choose an item ether, and say so you've got five of those. So let's add a couple more items. So I'm going to go to items here, make another child of item base. Go item. And this one will make a supportive one. So this one will be, um, uh, we'll call this one. Uh, do, 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 do. We call it um I don't know what should we call it uh let's go protective uh co coating okay and protective coating is going to have the ability to change our characters or the targets um defense rating so an item name here we're going to call this one protective coating. And item description here is going to be um, increase the target allies defense. And the type for this is going to be supportive. Sell value will do 250 and buy value will do uh, 600. Okay. And I'll do that one. And for that, Oh, sorry. For that, to do the code for that one, we're going to take the recipient from that. Get recipient. And from there, we can change their stats. So we can go to get combat component and get unit modifier. And this is now going to change their stats on the unit modifier. So in here, we're going to set members in stat modifier. Plug this in. And we're going to be changing the um, defense stat on here. So that'd be the stamina. Um, and on here, we're going to change that based on, oh uh, well, no, we change it based on here, sorry. So we get the current value from here. So we're going to break this and we just want to hide all of that and keep the stamina and this is going to increase it so we're going to take this and we're going to add a value to it and we're going to add let's say yeah add one to it okay so it's going to increase the stat uh, amount so basically it's going to double it because when it's one it's equaling the stat value that's in the uh in the stats of the player and this is a multiplier, a scale. So if we add one to it, it basically doubles their stamina value. So they should take a lot less damage. Again, all these numbers are changeable when you come to balancing this game. Um, and that'll do that there. 
So the main difference with this one is we don't want it to destroy itself after the particle system is finished. We only want it to play it once, that's true, but what we want it to do is to remain in the world for a certain amount of time and then when it uh, destroys itself, we're going to take this value back off the player. So at the moment we are binding an event on here, go to override, to uh, the, uh, probably on here, sorry, an event uh, system finished. I take that and we're going to take also the add event system finished for this. And for this, I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to disable the park system. So I'm going to take it to destroy the park system so it doesn't do any more. Component. And then I'll do this one as well. Destroy. Right from there. Destroy component. And plug that in there. So they will be destroyed when they finish their systems. But the item itself will remain in the world. So what I'm going to do here, set a timer up. So set timer by event. And we're going to drag this event down. Custom event. This event is going to do um, item drop off, we call it. When it does that, we're basically going to do the inverse of what you see here. So we're going to copy all of this. At the start. Copy. And paste that here. And then rather add one to it, we're going to do the inverse and add minus one. Or take away one, if you want. Around. But ultimately, we're going to undo what we just did here. So it does this, and then we're going to take it to destroy itself. All we have to do now is put in how long this effect will last. So here I'll put in, um, we'll put in, I don't know, 30 seconds. Okay. And this is a timer based one. So it's not a turn based one, it's a timer based one. For 30 seconds, your defense stat is a lot higher. Okay, and that's that stat done. Compile and save that and close that down. And so on and so forth. You can make any item do anything you want by just adding this certain information to your items here. Um, and let's say they can keep going on and on. So let's make one more, and that's going to be a combative one. Um, so we go in here, create this, and the item underscore, and of course, grenade. And the grenade here the particle system is going to be the explosion and uh, we'll do explosion and go to the event graph and very similarly on your on begin play here we can get the recipient and apply damage the base damage here is going to be a fixed value probably in here so we'll do, um, let's say, 35. And the damage causer is going to be get the instigator. If you want the base damage to change based upon the person who threw it, their stats, what you have to do is get the instigator cast to the unit base, and then from there you can get hold of the stats and use them however you wish to get this value. But for me, I'm just going to do this. And uh, that's all we have to do on this one compile and save and I'm just going to go to the item details for this uh, over here call this one grenade and this one is going to be have a description of um, toss a grenade at a enemy target to deal explosive damage and this would be a combative target sell value 500 buy value 2000 Okay, so let's add this to our inventory and see these in game and see if they work okay. So we go to player controller and go to the item inventory. I'm going to add the grenade, add five of those, and we're going to add item protective clothing, a coating rather, and add three of those. So, so to test that out, we'll go into and we have to test that out with Greystone because I haven't yet added the item animations for him uh, for the others two. So we just use this. Okay. And Greystone, we're going to go into uh, items. Going to go to weapons and see grenade. Click on that. 
and choose a target and it'll blow up a target okay and that's it you got the items i should see that has now taken one away from grenades got scrolls for protective uh, coating and so forth so you see how the uh display for the info hasn't turned up for these two uh, scrolls and weapons so what i need to do on there is just go to the ui and go to widgets and go to the uh item window go to graph and i'm going to add on here copy the item on hovered event copy that i'm going to add it to the end of the other two this one is going to be actually we don't need to do that we just need to do a create event and then choose from the drop down the item hovered that's it copy that drop that in there and paste that onto the end this one here too okay um okay so that will do that hit compile and save that and an issue if oh yeah target it needs to be plugged into are you there i'll save okay so that does that and that will now show the item details in that info box right there so other items we would add to this uh would be like trash items or um re uh, uh, crafting resources um that we want the enemies to drop in the end of the battle so i'm going to go to the items folder item base child and this would be item like which one spiders silk and for this all i have to do is change their details i don't have to actually put any code on it so item name spider silk item description this silky substance still reeks of uh those eight legged reeks and the type for this is going to be crafting and we'll set it for 50 and buy for 130 file and save and that's an example of some item that we can put on our characters so we're now going to have to add our items that we want the enemies to drop at the end of the fight on the unit base so we can go to unit base and we're going to add a new variable here and this is going to be loot table and on the loot table we have the variable type here for the item base class reference and for this we're going to make it have a map and the map is going to be using a float as its value and the reason why we're using a float is because we're going to make it have a chance to drop each item uh, and sometimes no item at all so we're going to hit compile and save this i then want to calculate what loot they can drop here so for that we need to go to the functions and for this we'll do uh choose loot and this is going to do two things first of all we need to calculate how many items we have and what we can drop from that from the sequence here and go up to take our loot table and then from there get the keys I'm going to enter there in zero and we're going to do a for each loop on the keys there and on the for each loop we're going to take this and the loop table and do find to find the item number we've got basically this is saying what is the chances of each one so the best way to think of it is think of it like tickets in a raffle so item a has 10 tickets or item b has 20 and item c has five you're you are far after, uh, you're far more likely to pick up item b than you are to items a or c because there's more tickets there and it works kind of the same like that so basically what we're doing is we're checking like what item we're looking for and reaching in grabbing a ticket and if it's there yes great if it's not we're going to remove all them tickets from that item so on the find here we're going to add up all the uh, tickets we have in our bowl so all the raffle tickets that are in the bowl we need to calculate how many there are so with this find here we need to store this in a local variable so make local variable and do lock uh sum and this will be just a float on its own 
drag this out, get, and then do add float. And I'm going to set that to lock sum. And that's it for this part. So it's just going around calculating how many we've got in total. And then on this one, we are going to get a random value from that. So make a new local variable, lock random value. It's so basically your random hand grabbing in and grabbing a ticket and looking for one. I'm going to drag this out and do, uh, sorry, set. And that'll go into then one. And the randomness is going to come from lock sum. So get lock sum. And we're going to do random float in range. And lock sum will go into max. And then this will go into lock random value. We then want to get all the keys again from our loot table. And there. And get keys. And do another for each loop. Yeah. And in this for each loop, we need to work out what is the value for each one. So we're going to drag out our loot table, do find, plug in the array element. And from there, I need to check to see how this value compares to our random value. So let's drag that random value in. Get. We're then going to take this random value and check to see if it's less than our find value. And if that is the case, plug that into there, into branch. Uh, yeah, so if it is the case, we want it to be true and output that value. So we can do return node and plug that into true. And that's going to output this array element. So we just drag that to there. If it's false though, however, we're going to do something slightly different here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the random value that we've got and choose uh, set. And we also want to drag it out and do get. And we're going to take the random value and take away the amount of tickets that that one item we're looking at had. We'll take that away from there and plug that into the false here. And that is it. So to give you a working example of this, uh, imagine that we've got say 20 tickets. Okay, so 20 is the sum, the lock sum here. And we're finding a random value between zero and 20. Let's say it picks out 15. We're going through the keys here and for each first key, we're gonna check its value, so which may be like five. And if the lock random value is less than five, which it isn't, it's gonna go down to false and take the random value of 15 minus five, equaling 10 and goes on to the next one. And if the next value is of a, uh, of a higher value than 10, then it's gonna pick that value there. If you wanna see more detail about how to do weighted loot tables, you'll find a video of it all on my channel there. Just search for weighted loot tables. But this is essentially what you're gonna do. So this will output a chosen array here. But we're gonna do one step further here. And that is gonna be saying like, is it actually ever going to actually give us an, an item? It may not actually give us anything. So what I'm going to do on the loot table of this character is make sure that it has a blank node on there and give it a probability of that blankness on the unit base. So let's go to the event graph on here. Go to loot table. I'm going to add some loot to this. Uh, not Sorry, not to this one. But go to the spider. Uh, go to the spider and go to spider unit, uh, open this up. So yeah, go over to the loot table, click on plus, and the first one it's gonna give us is spider silk, and we say it's got quite a good probability of this. So think of it in terms of tickets. So let's say, let's say uh, this one has 10 tickets to give you a spider silk. And we're gonna add another one, and that will have the chance to give you a potion. It's gonna be three tickets. And then we're going to add none. So it has a chance to give you nothing. We'll put that in as uh, three tickets as well. So in overall, there are 16 tickets in there. And Spider Silk has 10 of them. Therefore, it's a lot more likely than to get that than I'm to get potions or none. So that's that loot table. We can hit compile and save that. Now we need to calculate that loot table selection at the end of the game when we show the victory screen. So let's go to the victory screen uh, UI. 
Okay. And in the show screen here, if we move it along, you'll see it. So in the items collected, we're going to see the items listed here on the side here. And, but this needs to be calculating all the items that we've collected from the loot of the enemies. So on the graph of this, we're going to go onto the construct. And yep, on the end of this, we're going to get all actors of class. Plug that in. And I'm going to search for our enemy uh, unit base. Do a for each loop. And on a for each loop, we're going to take out the array element and we're going to call the loot into choose loot. And that's going to output the array element value. And I want to add this to an array. So we're going to make a new variable and we'll go items rewarded. And that'll be the variable type for item base class reference and that'll be an array and we're going to add that array element that we found here to this array so go add uh, not unique just want to do add put that in there and in there compile and save that so now we're getting loot added to our victory screen when they complete the fight when it's finished this, we then want to add that loot to the screen. So let's add the loot items to this, which can be pretty simple. It's just a simple widget. And we call it victory screen loot slot. And we're going to have no canvas panel on this. And instead, we're going to have a border. And in that border, we're going to change the brush color to be our black brush color we've been using. And we're going to add some text to it. And this text is going to be changed to our font we're using. And we're then going to give it some padding around the whole entire thing. So on the padding here, we'll give it padding of, say, 20, like so. So on custom on screen, if I see this, that is the sort of height and width it's going to be taken up. So I can increase the padding here to make this even bigger. If I go to padding on the top here and change this to 50 and bottom 50, I then want to make sure I'm telling the uh, vertical alignment here to be centered. At the moment, this isn't accurate because the height here is 100. But if I change it actually to desired on screen, you can see the height here taken over. Oh, and save that. Um, so I actually want to make some a little bit of spacing around this as well. So I'm going to go to victory screen loop slot, the top D uh, of the hierarchy. And on the padding here, on the top and on the bottom, we added the same padding that we've used for the unit slot. If we go to the unit slot, go here, and you can see I've got 10, 20, 10, 10. I'm just going to copy that and put that in here. I'll save that. We're then going to go to graph and add the variable for the item we want to show. Item, and that be item base, class reference. Make that editable and exposed on spawn. Then on the pre construct, we're going to take out the item and get the class defaults. And from there, we're going to break open the item details. And we want the item name. So we're just going to take this down here and we're going to set it to the text that's in our widget. So click on the text to be item name text. The tick is variable. And on the graph, we can drag that out and do set text. And that in text will go into item name. Okay, and that is it compile and save okay and that's done there so now let's go to the victory screen and go to back to this for each loop so when it's completed we're going to take the items rewarded get that and on completed we're going to do a for each loop for this in and on here we're going to create widget and we're going to set it to the Victory screen loot slot, and we're going to set it to this item, but only if this is valid. 
Remember, if it returns none, like it hasn't given us any loot, then we don't want it to make a new widget. So we check if it's valid first. And put it onto a branch. And if it's true, it'll go to create the slot. And the item here will be the array element. Ah. I'll save that. And this uh, victory screen loot slot widget has to be added to our loot array uh, of the screen here. So the item array here is a scroll box. We will make this editable. Uh, so we take, change the name of here to item loot list and tick is variable. Go to the graph, drag that out. And then you do add child plugging in your return value. File and save. And that's it. So let's test this out in the game and see what rewards we get from the combat. Okay, and we got warded some potion and some spider silk. And Grace has leveled up a few times. And there we have it. And there we have it. We've now got a completed item system in our game. However, that's kind of pointless if we can't actually take our items from one location to the next battle. So in the next episode, we're going to go through a save game system to save the file, the player stats and the items they've earned into the next level and next battle that they go into. If you want to watch the next episode right now, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Lady, where you can watch the episode plus many others from just $1 a month. Thank you so much to my patrons and YouTube members for their continued support, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, everyone.